Welcome to Watch Me Code. In recent episodes, we've been working on the analytics and tracking code for the Watch Me Code media service. We've added a lot of features and capabilities, as you can see by the episode list in this particular series. We're essentially done with the analytics and tracking collection at this point in time. But now we're going to be moving on into a new series where we talk about building a dashboard out of this analytics as well as other administrative features. So beginning with this episode, we're going to be moving forward with the Watch Me Code Media Administration website. This is going to be a website added on separately from the media service itself, but it will be designed to manage the media service, as well as show all of the analytics and tracking that we actually want to see based on the information that we're sending to Keen.io. Now, as you can see, I've clearly got things started here. I have a very basic layout already set up using Bootstrap for the CSS and basic layout of the website. You can grab Bootstrap from getbootstrap.com, but I'm not going to go into the details of putting that in place. You can find lots of other tutorials on getting that set up and running. In addition to Bootstrap, I'm also using Font Awesome so that I can get some nice little icons next to my text, which you can see right here, for example, in the menu where I have the current user logged in. And with all of that in place, I can really start focusing in on the actual application instead of having to run you through all of the basic setup for everything that we typically do in an Express application. And as I said before, we are going to be looking at ways to build a dashboard to show reports that we want. But rather than try and build all of these dashboards from the ground up, I'm going to use a Keen IO starter kit for a dashboard. There's a lot of different starter kits that they have available, including some Geo Explorer stuff, a basic starter kit, some connected device information, SFMTA parking map. There's a lot of really good examples of how you can use Keen IO in your applications. But I'm going to use the basic starter kit, and we're going to take this template, which is based on Bootstrap, connect it to the Keen.io service that we have set up, and start pulling in the information that we want out of the tracking and analytics data that we're already putting into Keen.io. In addition to that, this series will explore different ways that we can automate the uploading of our files to the Amazon AWS S3 service so that we can have the MP4s uploaded through a web page, have it automatically update our database on the back end, and be able to manage all of that directly in the administrative website rather than having to use the command line scripts that I've been using in the past while manually uploading the files to AWS. But in order to do all of that, we need the ability to have a user logged into the website and know whether or not they actually have the authorization required to do these things. So along the way, we're going to build a small set of security related features into the media administration site. Right now, this is just a basic express application that just has some simple layout in Bootstrap, as I said before, but we'll be adding a lot of functionality to each of the menu items over here, including the ability to log in and log out, ensuring that we do keep the website secure and safe from other people that would want to get in and mess things up. Before we get into the details of all this though, I do want to give you a quick walkthrough of what I've set up on the file system for this website already. So if I head back over to my editor, we can see in the file system explorer that we have a new folder here inside of the project. That folder is called admin, and this is going to be the administrative website. Now you might be thinking, why didn't you just build a slash media route inside of the existing media application? And I thought about doing that, and it could be done, but in the past, I've had some experiences that say that this is kind of a bad idea. Really what it comes down to is breaking the idea of the single responsibility principle. The media service is dedicated to delivering that media. The admin site is dedicated to managing all of that information and showing us things about the media service that we want to know through analytics. These are really two separate responsibilities. And ultimately what it comes down to is trying to put the admin functionality into the media delivery service would cause kind of an explosion of all the files and folders inside of the media project that we have. We would end up with deeply nested routes folders and views folders and business logic that kind of looks like it's supposed to be working in one place but might be working in the other. And it just gets a little bit crazy and a little bit annoying to deal with long term. It's far better overall to have a separate website for the admin site than for the media service itself. This allows you to do things like keeping the code clean for one, which as you know, is a really important thing for me. But it also lets you do things like deploy this admin service to a different server, a different configuration, have it scale up and scale out completely different than the media service as well. 
For example, if Watch Me Code suddenly becomes extremely popular and I'm serving up hundreds of thousands of files per day, the media service is probably going to need to scale out pretty quickly. I'm going to be going over to Heroku and upping that number of processors that I have in place so that it will be able to handle that amount of traffic. But the admin side of things, well, I only touch that once or twice a week maybe. And by separating out the admin site into its own project and its own service, I'll be able to leave the admin site alone in terms of scale. I won't have to stand up new instances of the admin service to handle all of the data that's being generated by the media service itself. So there's a lot of good reasons for keeping the admin site and the media service itself separated. You could make arguments the other way, of course, but I've found at least at this very high level, separating the real work of the public side of a service versus the back-end administrative kind of stuff is a very useful thing to do. So with that high-level overview out of the way, I want to show you some of the things that I have set up inside of the admin code already. As you can see, I've got a public folder with an assets folder underneath of it. I have Bootstrap installed and Font Awesome, as I said before. Of course, Bootstrap JavaScript needs jQuery, so I have jQuery there as well. I have a very basic route set up with my index router loading up the home route. My home router just responding to a get on the root URL, and then rendering the index page. I've got some basic views in place, including a layout file that has a lot of information in it already in order to get Bootstrap up and running, including this navigation section, which you can see in this Jade file, and that gives me the menu that we see on the page. There's also the index.jade file, which is the basic homepage that I have for the site right now. There's not really anything useful here, just a little bit of information, just to show that we have Bootstrap up and running and have Express rendering the index correctly. If you took a look at the app.js, you wouldn't notice anything particularly strange or unusual. This is pretty much the same app.js that I have inside of the media service right now. There will be a lot of changes inside of this particular file as we move forward though, but we'll get to that as we add individual features. Lastly, the bin slash www file, I've also basically copy and pasted from the media service. I've got HTTP being stood up, I've got Nanit being required. We are running the initializers as seen before, but I am using a different port number on this particular process because I want to be able to run both the media admin side and the media service itself on my local host at the same time. And that's it, really. That's the basic setup that I have for this really simple Express application so far. I've got it separated out into a different folder in the project structure so that I can modify the code related to the admin site separate from the media service and not really have to worry about anything. I have Bootstrap installed and I have Font Awesome installed as well. I've got a very basic menu and I've got a home page here. So stay tuned for the next upcoming episodes as we get started with the administrative and dashboard side of the Watch Me Code media service. And if you haven't been following along, be sure to check out watchmecode.net and see the existing analytics and tracking series where I'll show you how to set up all of the analytics and tracking information that you'll need in order to build a dashboard like we're about to do. Thanks for watching and happy JavaScripting.